In the past, I've talked about the minimum contents of your first aid kit. Today, we're gonna look at mine in a little more detail, give you some ideas what you might wanna pack in it uh, going forward. What you keep in your first aid kit is gonna to depend to some extent on what kind of skill you have in first aid. So if you've got a lot of skill in first aid, you're gonna need more equipment. If you don't have any skill in first aid, you might have a lot of equipment you don't know how to use. So you should get a little bit of experience in first aid, take a CPR course, take a first aid course, but get some training at least a little bit to find out what to do in case of a burn, what to do in case of a cut or a concussion or a heat stroke. You know, the most common outdoor injury is a sprain. Do you know how to wrap a sprain? Do you know how to stabilize a sprained ankle? That's the kind of thing that you might want to learn how to do. Let's take a look at this kit, which is by no means complete, but uh, it will give you some ideas of what you might want, and it might even spur you to think about some stuff that's missing in here. And if so, leave a comment. Give me your ideas what I need to have in this kit. So here we have um, a fairly basic kit that's divided into sections. This up here is the wound care burn and blister section. This is the first aid manual with medications and instruments. This is for fractures and sprains. And this is the field and trauma kit. These sections are not cast in stone. I've had to move things around a little bit just to make them fit in the kit. So I happen to have some of my trauma stuff up here because it wouldn't fit down here. Basic idea is that you want to organize your kit in a way that you can find stuff quickly. You need to be familiar with your kit. For instance, the most common thing that I use a first aid kit for is band-aids and antiseptic wipes or a triple antibiotic ointment. I have here a bunch of adhesive bandages and some triple antibiotic ointment. Uh, before I put either one of those on, I'll go for my betadine solution. This stuff is good because it doesn't burn when you apply it to a wound, at least not as bad as alcohol. And it uh, does a better job of disinfecting. It actually kills the germs more rapidly than isopropanol does. The downside to it is it will leave a brown stain on the skin. All right, so here I have a Steri-Strip pack and there's three Steri-Strips in it. If a Steri-Strip will hold the wound shut and you're not gonna have to use a needle and thread, then you'll go for the Steri-Strips any day. You can make a lot of friends by breaking out the Steri-Strips right after you show your wounded friend the needle and thread. If you're gonna use Steri strips, you're gonna to want to use some of this benzoin tinc tincture. Let's say you've got a cut right here on your hand and you're gonna use a Steri strip to shut it. So you're gonna clean the wound first and then you're gonna put some of this compound on the skin where the strip is gonna go and it will make the strip stick better. Another option instead of a Steri strip or a suture needle is gonna be a disposable skin stapler which I have in this kit. Honestly, this is the kind of thing you're more likely to use on somebody else. Quick clot is a type of bandage that contains a material in it that will make your blood clot. So if you've got a severe bleeding wound, then you can apply this to it and then wrap it up in it and it will cause the blood to clot. This is a section on fractures and sprains. And so I've got various kinds of bandages and tape that you use. This is a self-sticking bandage that works pretty well to wrap like an ankle or a wrist or a dislocated thumb or some such thing. More trauma stuff. Hey, remember to get your gloves. If you're dealing with somebody that's bleeding, you don't know who it is, get these gloves out. Or maybe you do know who it is and you need the gloves. In any event, you've got the option of latex or latex free. I did want to show you some new items I got. One of them is a cold compress. So this is handy for a sprain. You bust the inner pack inside of here and shake it and it gets very cold, about 32 degrees. So if you got a sprained wrist, put it on your wrist uh, for about 20 minutes and then discard the pack. Got two of those. Quick clot clotting sponge. Basically a smaller version of this. This is an absorbent foam dressing. You wrap that piece of foam on the wound and then wrap the bandage around it and then it's a self-sticking bandage. So the bandage will stick to itself. This is uh, an absorbent bandage. It's not self-sticking, but it does have Velcro. So the bandage material itself is not sticking, but there is a Velcro strip at the end that will stick to the bandage. 
This is an Israeli bandage. The Israeli bandage has an absorbent pad on it that you put on the wound, and then you wrap the bandage around one time, then there's a clip, and you thread the bandage through this clip, and then work it back the other way, and it tightens down kind of like a slip knot. You put that clip right on top of the wound, and as you wrap the bandage around it, that clip gets pushed down on top of the pad and applies compression localized to the wound itself. Israeli bandages are really good for being able to target the compression on the wound. This is a halo seal. So a halo seal is something that you put on a sucking chest wound. So for instance, if you get shot in the chest and you've got this sucking chest wound so that as you breathe, you're, you're you're not getting air in through your mouth, you're getting it in through the wound, and so your lungs are not filling. So what you do is you have to create a vacuum there, and so you put this pad, you just stick it right on, and it will stick through sweat and blood, and then you just allow the person to breathe, and as he breathes in, then there's gonna be some pressure in there, and you, you vent, you lift a little flap on the seal and let that vent out, and then you close it back as he exhales. And then the next time he's got room for his lung, that way you can get the lung to fill back up with air. There's two of these in a halo pack so that in case you have an exit wound as well. This is not just for gunshot wounds. I mean, if you get impaled with an object or if you fall off a motorcycle and land on a stake or something, then you, you could need one of these. I got another SAM splint. I had to use part of this SAM splint on my dog, broke his leg, and I splinted his leg. The last item is this uh, pre-wrap. Basically, pre-wrap is something that you wrap all the way around whatever you're gonna tape. So, down here, I have cloth tape that I would use to stabilize a dislocated thumb or a sprained wrist or ankle. If you stick that to your skin and your hair, when you go to pull that tape off, it's gonna strip all your hair out. So if you put this pre-wrap on, then you can tape to the pre-wrap instead of taping to your hair. You can bolster your first aid kit significantly for 30 or 40 bucks. Chinook Medical Supplies is a good place to go. They've got excellent quality items at a fair price. Get yourself one of these kits to put in the car. Get one for the house. I got one of these kits for all of the guys in the family, all the kids, my dad, and the brothers-in-law. Here's a good strategy for helping your friends get their first aid kit together. Get them some of the more uncommon items in a first aid kit, like a halo seal, and a quick clot sponge, and a SAM splint, and an Israeli bandage. Some of the things that are a little less common, like you don't just find these at Walmart, for instance. All right, and then let them go to Walmart to buy all the stuff that's easy for them to get. The adhesive bandages and the betadine wipes, that kind of thing you can buy anywhere and just let them get that for themselves and, and put together their whole kit. But the way to encourage them to get started is to buy them some of the more cool and uncommon items and get them excited about the project. If you've got a doctor friend or a doctor in the family um, or anybody who's got some medical training, just ask them if they will volunteer to come over to your place on a Saturday and invite a bunch of friends and have them go through a one or two hour first aid course. Okay, go to the blog, survivalnewsonline.com. I'll have more information about first aid kits and where to find some of the supplies. Go check it out. I'll see you there.